Guys, in front of us, I've got two fantastic options in the middleweight adventure bike category. On my left, I've got the 2023 Ducati Desert X, and on my right, I have my own personal 2023 CFMoto Ibex 800T. This is the T model. Now, in today's video, I want to propose a challenge between these two motorcycles. Keep this in mind. That motorcycle cost $11,000. That motorcycle costs $17,000. What I want to find out in today's video is, is the Desert X a better motorcycle and is it worth an extra $6,000? So after I do my pros and cons ride on each motorcycle, I'm going to meet you guys back here and I'm going to talk about which bike is better and why. I hope you guys are excited. I love both of these motorcycles. This video is going to tear my heart apart. So if you could hit that like button so we can kind of, for every like, my heart will be stitched one time and fixed. Let's get on these bikes and uh, let's talk about them. God, they both look cool as hell right here. <laughs> You first, my dear. Alrighty, Desert X, you are first. First uh, con, I can say right off the get-go, is the exhaust note. And I want to note that this is with a Termi exhaust. The uh, CF Moto has a stock exhaust, but this is the exhaust note that we're working with with the Desert X. Not terrible. Not as good, though. Now we can begin. You know, while we're in a uh, low-speed parking lot, I can say one of the pros. I guess we should go with the majority of the pros first for the Desert X, and then we'll go to the cons. First pro on the Desert X has got to be the balance. Uh, this bike, I don't know if I've ever had a motorcycle that I felt so quickly comfortable with balancing and getting to a stop than I have with the Desert X. Ducati has done something with the front wheel and the suspension to make the front wheel seem very light and after spending a few hundred miles on this thing I absolutely love what they did with that super pro on in my book. Second pro with the Desert X here has got to be the power delivery. This engine gives you such torquey little power, and it makes you feel like you can just take this thing anywhere. Uh, it doesn't feel over or underpowered. I think Ducati have got this thing in a very nice sweet spot. Typically, I think the 700 and 900 is like the ideal place for just motorcycles in general these days. But when you're on a heavier motorcycle, you do want to be on that upper end, which that is exactly where Ducati has got their Desert X. We've got a 900cc engine, and the power delivery is just smooth and strong. It dies off a little fast, so you got a lot. It's, it's a lot of torquey power, right? Like low end. But the power is very smooth, even when the power starts dying off when you get higher in the revs. The bike still handles totally fine or the bike is propelled totally fine. Doesn't handle. I mean, it does, but you know. Next pro we got to talk about is so obvious, I don't even know if I need to talk about it, but it has got to be the fit and finish on the controls. This motorcycle has night and day fit and finish as compared to the Ibex 800T. These controls are, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen my 30 day review of this bike, but these controls are like top notch. They are what I want every motorcycle to aspire to have. What the hell? That's awesome. Uh, controls do not get feeling much better than what this Desert X has on it. And Ducati's just done such a good job with fit and finish. It is, uh, it is hard to compete with this level of quality. Next pro for the Desert X has got to be the Dakar style screen, the upright screen. I feel like not only is the quality better, like pixels, everything looks more crisp on there, but I also feel like Ducati did an absolutely fantastic job laying the screen out. And even when you stand up, which is the entire point of having an upright screen, you can still very easily see everything. 
And it's also kind of cool that the screen changes depending on what mode you're in to give you better information for that style of riding. Ducati did a primo job and, and Ducati's been doing really good with screens and dashes for a while. So this is no surprise to me, but it is definitely something that the Ducati definitely gets in their pro department. All right, guys, since we're talking about the screen, let's talk about the next pro, which has got to be the rider modes. Now, both motorcycles have rider modes, but the Ducati modes actually change everything. It changes power delivery. It changes traction control. It changes, like, slip control. It changes ABS. Like, it changes so many things. So instead of just, like, changing how much power is delivered on the motorcycle, you feel like each mode is actually different. It's not just like a little power change. And on top of all of that, the modes are customizable. So you can change the, the amounts in each mode. That's, this is not, again, it's not even a, a close comparison, uh, but Ducati wins easily in the modes department. We're just gonna keep tagging off of all of these because the next thing is traction control slash the lack there of it. Now the Desert X here obviously has traction control. It has different levels of traction control. You can change it by the two different uh, off-road modes that you have on the bike, or you can change it, you can customize it in there. I love traction control for a motorcycle meant to go off-road. That just kind of goes hand in hand to me and makes a lot of sense. Now, this is kind of another one of those things where it's not even a competition because the Ibex does not have any sort of traction control. It's kind of silly that that bike doesn't have that, but obviously Desert X is gonna win in that department. All right guys, so those are the pros on the Desert X, but let's talk about the cons. First con has got to be the windscreen. Now, I like the windscreen, I like the way it looks, but the fact that it's stationary and small it doesn't do really well if you're looking at this motorcycle and wanting to do some sort of touring on it. The screen is totally fine for lower speed stuff or, you know, maybe if you're doing some off-road, but once you get to highway speeds and sustaining those speeds for a long period of time, I do feel like the majority of you guys are going to want more wind protection. And remember, I'm judging these two motorcycles as they come. I'm not judging them if you can get aftermarket accessories for them. Next con on the Desert X has got to be the throttling. I don't know what spacing issue that the throttle has, but there's this little dead space in the beginning of your throttle. And sometimes some motorcycles have that and it's not a big deal, but the Desert X has enough of a space to where my brain starts going, is the throttle working? And I start like questioning myself and then the throttle will start to engage. So what that ends up doing to me as a rider, it kind of starts making me second guess myself. And what that leads to is me having a lack of confidence with this motorcycle when I'm doing, especially like low speed stuff where you need to have that really pinpoint precision on the throttling. Now, I guess one of the cons that we could say for this motorcycle is the price. You know, like I said in the beginning of the video, this motorcycle costs $6,000 more than the bike we're comparing it to. So price-wise, it is a bit expensive. The question is, is everything you get in this bike worth that price tag for you, the ending buyer? Uh, but as far as this comparison goes, it is technically a con. All right, guys, so final con I wanna talk about on the Desert X is the seat. Now, generally the seat is totally fine, but I, when I look at an ADV bike, I look at, is it capable off-road, which this bike most certainly is, and then is it good for touring, so long distances during a day of riding. And while this seat would probably be totally adequate for 80% of what you guys are gonna ride with it, I do feel like it's slightly too hard to the point where after I ride maybe five hours, four hours, my butt does start to hurt on the Desert X. And that's because of the seat being a little too hard. I don't know if there's an aftermarket seat or something like that, but if I was gonna own this motorcycle, I would definitely be looking into some sort of softer seat. It would allow me to ride this bike a little longer than I currently can. Final pro I wanna give the Desert X is its off-road capabilities. 
this is one of the few motorcycles that I can actually say I have railed off-road and railed to it for me right like I am not an off-road guy but I have done stuff on this motorcycle that I am nowhere near comfortable with and the confidence I got from the suspension from the brakes from the electronic rider aids this bike is so confidence inspiring off-road and it makes me want to do more off-roading period even outside of owning this motorcycle because obviously it's a loner I'm gonna have to give it back but the confidence inspiring nature of this motorcycle off-road has got to be one of the pros without a doubt and guys that about wraps up everything on the desert x now let's get back to the ibex swap bikes and let's talk about the pros and cons for that bike all righty now you keen-eyed observers are gonna notice i have different pants on and the desert x is gone yes when i went to film yesterday to film the motovlog section of the ibex it started raining on me and i couldn't continue that for obvious reasons so we are here the next day chase has different pants on but that's it sorry to ruin uh the figment of your imagination that's not going to change the fact that we got some pros and cons to talk about with the ibex Oh, if we don't start the pros with that exhaust note, then I don't know what we start with. Uh, so guys, pros on the Ibex. Like I said, that exhaust, and that's the stock one. That is how this bike comes. The Ibex has such a cool grunt out of its uh, throttling from the get-go. I absolutely love it, and it's something that I definitely didn't expect on the Ibex. Like, I know it's got a fun engine and all, but this noise, it, ha it gets you excited riding this thing around. I'm almost scared to put uh, the aftermarket Leo Vinci exhaust on this thing, but that will be in a future video. But we're talking about the motorcycle stock. So next pro is definitely going to be the seat on the Ibex 800. I have put like, I don't know, seven, 800 miles on this bike in a month, uh, which is unheard of for me because I've got so many loaner bikes I typically have to ride, but I've put a lot of miles on this bike specifically just because it's so comfortable and fun to ride. And the seat I have ridden in all day, probably upwards of five to six hours, and I have had no issues with the seat at all. I, I really like what CF Moto has done with the seat. It's very comfortable. In the future, I want to do like an iron butt, which is when you ride over a thousand miles in 24 hours. I really want to try doing that on this bike now because I think this seat is one of the best seats for long-term riding. This bike has been a fantastic touring bike and I really can't wait to take, uh, take advantage of that and really put it to the test, but the seat is great. I, I absolutely love it. Next up is got to be the price. Guys, this is the upgraded model, the 800T. It comes with, I mean, I'm not going to go into all the details that it comes with. It's the updated model, has more electronics, blah, 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 blah. Now, this thing comes in at a price tag of $11,000. The amount that you get in this motorcycle for $11,000, I personally feel like is damn near a steal. Uh, but that's kind of CF Moto's uh, marketing plan, is they want to offer motorcycles under market value that give you more than you expect out of it, and that's, that's where they're putting their marketing dollars. And you really feel that with the Ibex 800. All the controls feel decent. I got no problems with them. And the bike can just do, like you got cornering ABS on this motorcycle. You got an 800cc engine. The bike is phenomenal, especially for the price tag. So I would feel dumb if I didn't talk about price as one of the pros for this bike. Next pro we can talk about is this adjustable windscreen. I love the fact that this windscreen is adjustable. It is pretty big. Here, I'll, uh, I'll get cruise control on and we'll get it turned up or in the upper position. And boom, 
we have a up tall windscreen and now I'm, I should have done that from the get-go so my wind would be blocking but I didn't uh, I love the windscreen I love that it's so adjustable when I've gotten on the highway with this bike the windscreen at its higher position keeps the wind going right above my head doesn't really cause any buffeting or anything like that that has been one of the keys that has been able to let me go miles and miles and miles on the highway with this bike with absolutely no problem. I feel like this bike is a phenomenal touring bike and that windscreen definitely helps it in that department. Next pro I wanna talk about is the power delivery. I have loved the torquey, fun, grunty power that this bike has. We all know that the engine powering this thing is KTM 790 Adventure engine, the exact same engine. It gives you such a fun, torquey power band and it works well with the gearing as well. The gearing doesn't feel short and quick. I end up shifting relatively quickly because my brain wants to do that or something, but this bike has no problem revving it up. You don't have as much power when you rev it up, but it is a very fun amount of power that this bike delivers and I've really enjoyed the way it puts it down. That'll actually be a good point where we can now talk about the cons on this bike because there are definitely cons. Now, the power delivery is very fun and grunty and enjoyable, but there is a very weird spot with the mapping of the power or the fueling. I've heard different people say different ways and different things. For whatever reason, this bike around the 4,000 to 5,000 RPM range, the power dies off a little bit. And then at about 6,000, the power comes back. A really weird mapping situation. I don't know what's going on with that. I now ride around that knowledge, kind of the same way I rode around the R6, knowing that under you know 9,000, 10,000 RPMs, the bike isn't going to be that quick. But then above that, it's just going to be a rocket ship. So you kind of learn how to ride, and that's what I've noticed I've done on this bike. Next con-ish, I would say is the buttons. Now, the buttons are fine. I've got no problem. For $11,000, they're okay. When you're comparing this bike with a Desert X where the buttons are premium and great, you really notice how these buttons are kind of like low middle tier. They all work. I've had no problem. I get a click on all the buttons. I'm not complaining about the buttons. I just wanted to make a note that comparative to the bike that we're talking about against this bike, they are night and day different and you really notice that when you go from bike to bike. Next con, and this could be more of a personal thing, is I do feel like this bike went over on its kickstand, leans over a little far. I, I get to the point where I'm like, ah, are you gonna fall over? The bike has never fallen over its kickstand and I have the kickstand plate extender. But I wish the bike didn't lean so much when I leaned it over the kickstand. It's just a little worrisome. That could be a suspension adjustment that I can make to fix that. But as I have the bike set up right now, it does worry me sometimes. Uh, and you know, especially when I'm on like uneven ground or something like that. So guys, probably the major con for this entire motorcycle to me personally is the electronics package. And more specifically, cause like you're probably looking at the spec sheet for this bike and you're like, Chase, the bike has ABS, cornering ABS. It has a, a quick shifter. It's got a TFT display. It's got modes. It does have all those things, but what it does not have is traction control. And as a new rider that I don't really know what I'm doing, I would love to have traction control on this motorcycle. I've told you guys I do plan on taking this bike off-road, and so far all the hundreds of miles that I've put on this bike have been all road miles. I have put no off-road miles on it. You know, being 100% honest with you guys, I'm a little worried about it. Without having traction control, if I get into a situation where I'm having a hard time controlling the motorcycle, it would be nice if I had traction control in those situations, and I'm not going to have that on this bike. Now, one of the pros for that is, you know, this is going to be the first bike that I really started venturing off-road with, and it's going to force me to learn the skills that I need to have. So in a way, I'm kind of thankful, but the little scaredy cat in me is like, yeah, but it sure would be nice to have. One of the final cons I want to uh, talk about with this bike is the uh, rider modes. So 
like I told you guys, the bike does have rider modes. There's a sport and there is a rain mode. Now on the Ibex, the main thing, it really the only thing those modes do is the power delivery. It just tapers the power down. Granted, the bike doesn't have slide control. It doesn't have uh, traction control, but I do feel like I, if I've got rain and sport, I, I want it to do more things. I'm honestly confused at the fact that this bike doesn't have traction control because like I told you guys, the bike has lean sensitive, like cornering ABS, which means the motorcycle has to, in some way, know if it's leaned over. If it has that, then why would you not put traction control in this motorcycle? It doesn't really make sense. And because of that, and this could be because I'm comparing this with a Desert X, which is not entirely fair since the Desert X pricing is so much more, I feel like I wish the rider modes gave me a more significant difference than they currently do. Now, with rain and sport, you can definitely tell a power difference, but there's no levels of ABS. The ABS is literally just on, period. Unless you install a little uh, ABS killer, I may or may not have that in the shop subscribe for a future video for that uh so yeah you you have no abs turn off you now have no levels of abs and it kind of makes the rider modes feel eh okay cool so I, I have a little less power it just seems it makes the rider mode seem like not a huge deal i do want to make it clear that another con is that this bike is a adv bike it's made to go off-road we got the cool spoke tires on this model and the ABS is not able to be turned off. Like I told you guys, I've got this cool little thing that I ordered to, that I've got to install, that will actually turn the ABS off on this bike. If you did not modify it, you would not be able to turn the ABS off on this bike. And for a bike that will probably be taken off-road, I feel like they should have included that with the, uh, with the bike, like a, a, an ability to go into the menu system and turn the ABS off. I I feel like they kind of should have done that. That's something that I do consider a con. Now, I know a lot of you guys that watched the first ride video are probably asking yourselves, well, Chase, I thought you didn't like the menu system. What's Why is that not a con on here? And I gotta be honest, after spending, you know, several hundred miles on this bike, I've now learned the menu system to the point where if I want to change the, the rider mode, if I want to make my heated seat on, if I wanted to turn the heated grips on, I know how to do that really quickly. So it's less of a con now because I've, I've learned how to do it. Uh, but generally, I, I think that kind of sums up the majority of the, the pros and cons here on, on the Ibex. Uh, so with that being said, let's get back and uh, let's finish this video up and decide is the Desert X worth the $6,000 more or is the Ibex totally fine? It comes with no surprise that I went with the CF Moto Ibex 800T. And the main reason for that is the price. Like I can't really afford or justify a $17,000 price tag of the Desert X. If I could, it would be an entirely different conversation. But here's the thing. Even if you can afford a $17,000 motorcycle, now are you going to have as much fun with this motorcycle when you're off-road if you go down? I imagine you're probably going to have something in the back of your head thinking, if I go down on this bike, it's going to be a lot more expensive. I can personally say I have downed a Desert X a couple times and they are extremely resilient. So don't think that this is some fragile little motorcycle. If you don't have the 17 grand, but you want to get into the ADV space, I think obviously the 800T is a phenomenal model. I think if I had way more money, I think I would go with the Desert X. Just the amount of rider aids would probably be what mostly sells me. It's definitely not the power. The, the Ibex 800 has a really fun power delivery. The Ducati Desert X has a great power delivery. So if I have to decide which motorcycle I would rather go with, if I don't have to care about money, I'm going with the Desert X all day, every day. You get more premium, literally everything. More premium suspension, more premium buttons, more premium feel, a better, a higher quality dash. 
Literally everything is a higher quality, but with higher quality comes higher money. And if I'm going to take a motorcycle, especially right now, if you guys are like me, I'm brand new to this ADV space. I don't know what's going to happen when I really start sending this bike off road. I don't want a really expensive motorcycle as my first ADV bike. I want something that doesn't cost as much. So my heart ain't going to hurt as bad when I send this thing down the road. If you're looking for your very first ADV bike, I honestly might go with the Ibex so that you can have something to aspire to. You spend a couple seasons on the Ibex, you get used to riding in ADV space, then you have the Desert X to upgrade to. Guys, I'm Chase on Tools. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know which bike you would pick in the comments down below. Make sure to hit the like button and drop that comment. Make sure to put OC because you made it to the outro crew. I'm going to leave a video for you guys of us upgrading that Ibex with this awesome Lone Rider gear. It is dope. You guys check that video out here at the end and I will see y'all on the next one. You're not losing. Any... If you get either of these motorcycles, you have one. Congrats to anybody that does that. Later, guys.